You've got an off-grid piece of land. Maybe it's a cabin, a tent, a tiny structure. You're either living there, homesteading, or maybe even renting it out on Airbnb. But you have one dirty problem, and that's the bathroom. You don't know what you can do and how you can operate one. Well, check out today's video, because I've got something crazy for you. Do you want to know the cheapest, easiest way to have a bathroom off the grid? Well, it's actually something that we all have used before, a porta potty. I know that sounds crazy, but check this out. In today's video, the owner of the Sun Barn, a really great glamp site in upstate New York, is going to talk us through why he decided to go with the simple porta potty for his off-grid bathroom. So this is, and I haven't been to all the glamp sites, I'm, I'm trying to, but this is uh, one of the first ones with that is utilizing uh, or is using porta potties. That sounds like such an amazing idea, just because it, it it really alleviates you. Like people are a used to it, they know how to do it. Because what I've noticed is that's the hardest part: mm -hmm. is teaching someone how to use a composting toilet or making someone get comfortable with something. Everyone has used one before. It's one less thing for you to worry about. It's all about you know operational efficiencies and making things as easy as possible for you to run and the the consumer. They don't want to have to learn a new tool. Um, but is it eating into your profits or has it actually been like, oh my goodness, that's why didn't I think of that earlier? That's an amazing idea. Yeah, you're exactly right about it. It's what people are used to. Mm -hmm. And I remember with my original setup, what I built was not much different than a porta potty. It just mm -hmm. was under my my deck. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and sometimes when I would show people the tour of everything, we get to that point, and I'd look at their facial expressions, and there'd be a little bit. You'd see the question marks in uh -huh. their head. And then once we decided we we're going to go the porta potty route, it just um, it never was an issue. I just people are used to. In fact, I think even in my description, I say. It's what you'd find like at a music festival. Yeah. So, um, and it's just, they're new, they're clean, they're maintenance every week. Mm -hmm. So I've, it's, yeah. and I'm surprised to hear from you that I'm one of the few people who have them. I would think it's the, the best way to go. It, it, it honestly sounds like it. <laughs> I mean, I, I keep going back to it in my head, like, wow, like what a, what an amazing, like life hack that is where it just can make this so much easier for us and for everyone who's running one um because as everyone thinks about you know this option or that option really quickly i want to break down what it would take to get something like this set up for you so how much is it going to cost to get a porta potty set up on your glamp site your airbnb your off-grid structure and also let's dig into some of the pros and the cons to see if this is actually a good idea that i would recommend I don't want to take up too much of your time. Hit the like button if you're getting value from this video. Let's dig into it. Okay, cutting straight to the chase, there's three main factors that are going to influence how much the price of you getting a porta potty is going to be. So, three things to keep in mind that is service accessibility, service frequency, and your geographic location. So, let's break those down. Your geographic location is obvious. It's going to cost you a little bit more in somewhere like New York City, LA, et cetera, to get a porta potty than it is in somewhere like Kansas to get a porta potty. Why? You know why. Let's let's like let's be honest. Let's cut the chase. Things just always cost more in some of those high traffic, larger cities. Okay, so another one is service frequency. You need to ask yourself how much traffic will your porta potty get? How quickly will it fill up? You don't want to let it hit the point where it's busting at the seams for obvious reasons. So how often per week, per month, per, you know, every two weeks, would you like them to come pump it out, clean it up and get it ready for you? If you have a glamp site where multiple people are sharing a porta potty, you would want it to be serviced more frequently. If you have a glamp site where you're booked nonstop, you would want it to be serviced more frequently. Uh, for the most part, people really just view it from how many times per week whether it's one time per week or two times per week, they would like to get it serviced. If you are getting your porta potty for a longer stay, which I actually recommend if you are gonna get a porta potty, and I'm gonna dive into that a little later, why you should get it for a longer stay if you are gonna go through with this. But if you're getting it for a longer stay, then you could actually reduce the frequency a bit to maybe like once every two weeks or something along those lines, depending on if your site can handle that, or I say handle that, but really handle how little you get what I'm saying. Now, the last factor that's going to influence the price that you pay to get a porta potty is the service accessibility. For the most part, people use porta potties and off grid type of bathroom situations in pretty remote or hard to get to locations. People put porta potties on the top of high rise buildings that are getting built. You'll see them sometimes on bridges uh, that are getting worked on all day to give the guys in construction somewhere to go. Guys and girls in construction. 
see them at different events or off-grid places. So honestly, this one is very straightforward. How difficult is it for them to get a truck out to you to service it? The more difficult it is, the more they're going to charge you. If you are at the top of a remote mountain that is difficult to drive into, etc., it, it, they're just going to charge you more. It, this one's a pretty straightforward one that you can't change as well. It's something to be mindful, and it's also something that, you know, is very negotiable. Negotiable. It's also something that you can negotiate very easily, you know, kind of say, hey, you know, it's easy to get to or try to make it easier to get to. Uh, it's just one of those things that I would push back on if the price got too high because of the service accessibility. There's one minor thing that comes into play here, and that's the type. Not all urinals are the same. There's not one size fits all. I'm certain that we all have, when I say the word urinal, we all have something in our minds that we think of. And for the general most part, that is the one that you should go with. Honestly, it's the cheapest situation. You just walk in. It's right there. Wham, bam, thank you, man. Do your business. But the price of the porta potty is really baked into the type of porta potty you get. So there's different sinks, there's different uh, urinals, there's uh, mirrors in some of them. Some of them don't have a sink and they'll just have a hand sanitizing station. Uh, you know, that's obviously going to be cheaper than one with a sink. If there is a sink, there's normally a pump uh, where there's water in the bottom and you kind of pump up the pressure with your feet. And that's what makes the water come out of the spigot. Um, again, that's a little bit more expensive. These are things that you can keep in mind. There's also VIP trailers. So when uh, people are shooting movies instead of like porta potty or something like that, uh, they'll have like the VIP trailers, which are more like things that you would see more like an RV that gets parked somewhere, normally metal cages. Um, and then there's just overall differences in construction. Some urinals and some porta potties look better than others. Um, some look kind of old and dungy. These are all things that come into play. Honestly, just get the cheapest one you can find. Just, just get the cheapest one you can find. Don't don't try to be cute. Definitely don't try to do the VIP trailer thing. Uh, I really don't think your guests are going to appreciate the fact that you're going to be paying like 500 a week for an off grid toilet. Some of them do have uh, the VIP trailers do have off grid showers. I, I just don't think it's worth it. And we'll talk about showering in a little while when we go into the pros and the cons of getting something like this. So in areas like New York City and LA, the prices are sky high. You can see them for roughly around 260 per week. Uh, and that's for like two services or down to 175 a week for one service. But to be honest, I've seen them even go up in price to 150 to 200 a day. Now, the reason why if you do do this route, it's cheaper to get them a little bit longer term is there's just a price that these companies have to pay to drop it off at your location no matter what. Gas, man or woman power to send somebody out there to take it off of their trailer, set it down at your location, etc. So when you're looking at the day prices, getting one for two days uh, might actually cost you more than getting one for three days where you just have that weekend and it's easier for them to work with. So when you look at pricing, Think of it like when you're buying pizza from a traditional pizza place where you hit that price point where after I get three to four just slices, you know, uh, pizza by the slice, you hit that point where you might as well just get a pie if you just wait a little longer. Uh, I, I'm Again, I live in New York. Everything to me is like the price per pizza slice. That's how I map things out. Um, so... Yeah, you, you might actually want to go into this a little bit longer term. And for most people that are setting up a glamping site, uh, I would just recommend looking at the monthly rate. That's where you're going to get your best price per day in a porta potty. Now, to do research on this segment of the clip, I looked at price points uh, across the nation, and it just varies so crazy. I've seen it in, like, middle America for $77 a week, uh, and I've seen it in some places, like, for $350 a week. Like, I'm sorry, Joshua Tree, California people. I know you guys are out there. I know you guys watch this video. If you're going to go down this route, you're going to be paying big bucks to get a porta potty So um, it really just varies by geographic location. That's what I've seen it vary most by geographic location and also company. Um, for some reason, some companies act like their poop don't stink, pun intended. I think I'm really smart. And some of them are just willing to work with you and they're just like, yeah, we'll drop it off. We'll pick it up. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. So keep that in mind. Uh, to be honest, the main thing that you should do is just call around. Pricing varies so differently from company. You have to not be afraid to pick up the phone and just call around. Keep in mind that you get what you pay for. As in, if something feels like it's just too cheap to be true, uh, you're probably going to notice why real soon, and that is not something I would want to play around with. If something does seem too cheap to be true, 
uh, you most likely are going to get terrible service. So when they do come by, they won't clean it up. They won't take everything out. They're going to charge you as if they came by twice a week, but only come by once a week, that type of stuff. Or you might be just be getting older, crappier, used porta potties. Hashtag Woodstock 99. So one of the largest pros is a simple, straightforward, easy to set up, uh, no logistics, uh, off-grid toilet. Uh, and on top of that, the second pro is there's no learning curve. Uh, everyone has used a porta potty before. People are just gonna settle right in. Um, I've been to a lot of different off-grid structures, um, and it, the bathroom situation is always the part where you get taken back, where you're like, you're not sure what's you know, going to be the situation and also how to use it. Um, I've heard some really funny stories from friends who've gone to off-grid structures and tried to use bathrooms and have made a bit of a mess uh, with their significant other in the other room. So they got to clean it up and do all that. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so, you know, uh, with a uh, porta potty, it's straightforward. There's no learning curve. Uh, another pro with a uh, porta potty is it's arguably the simplest and best off-grid toilet or waste system. Uh, I don't care what anybody says. I know composting toilets are supposed to just be amazing. Uh, they have so many shortcomings. Um, the largest one being that either your guests or you are going to have to physically handle their, someone else's waste at some point in time. Most people are just not a fan of that. With this system, it's just so seamless. You don't have anything to worry about. Digging into the cons, first off, most of these don't come with a shower unless you're going the VIP route. So you'll have to think about setting up some type of off-grid shower system on your own. Um, that's actually pretty simple. Getting an off-grid shower is the easiest one to do. There's actually a link in the description to check it out. There's a $40 shower system that you can set up. It's so easy. Like you, sh you really don't have to worry about that, but it is a con, so I have to admit that. Another con is there's no customizability uh, with something like this. You, you get it and it shows up and that's that. Um, it won't fit into a vibe if you're trying to set up, you know, an atmosphere or some feng shui out there. Uh, you're gonna get a, a bright blue or yellow or gray porta potty. It's gonna look like a porta potty and there's nothing that you can really do about that. Um, I've seen some people get really cute with them and try to like put a little rug in there and do stuff like that. It's just a porta potty. It's always going to be a porta potty. Uh, and the largest con with something like this is it's an ongoing cost. I hate ongoing costs. Um, I hate having to pay for things after the fact or to pay for things to keep them going. A lot of the times I like to buy once and cry once. Uh, this goes down to your personal business philosophies here. Uh, but me personally, I hate the fact that it's an ongoing cost and it can very quickly get expensive if you sit back and think about using this system over a long period of time. So that leads me to the point of if I would recommend this or not. If this is a great, simple solution. I actually wish I would have thought of this sooner. Um, I would have maybe implemented it at my glam site just because it's, it's so straightforward, it's so easy to do. But the largest issue is the ongoing price. So I would recommend this to people if you can get one at a reasonable rate. If you can get one $70 a week or something along those lines, yeah, sign me up. Like, I'll have nothing to worry about. Someone else will come in, take the poop away. Like, let's just be straightforward about what this is. Like, it's just... It's so easy. Um, running a glamp site, uh, uh, off-grid Airbnb, there's so many things to think about and so many things you are not thinking about. Um, and having this taken off of your plate, this is actually one of the largest things for me personally as I was doing research on all of this and as I chat with people. Off-grid toilets, it's the number one thing that always comes up. It's the number one thing that uh, nags people and they have to worry about it. So j just imagine paying a one flat fee per week per month whatever and you don't have to worry about this at all it, it, this sounds like a godsend like this is such a great idea shout out to the sun barn obviously links in the description so you can go check out their airbnb uh maybe spend a night and support them but yeah i would definitely recommend this if you can get this at a great price now that leads me to why I wouldn't recommend this to certain people. If you can't get this at a great price, just stay away from it. It can easily get to the price of a high-end composting toilet over a large period of time. To me, the coolest, like easily the best waste management system is the uh, Cinderella. Uh, it's an incinerating toilet uh, that literally just burns the waste away. Um, it's good for the environment. Like it, it's just a really cool system. Um, and that one costs about $5,000. Well, take a step back. If you don't get a porta potty at a great price, you might be paying, you know, over time, you're going to pay $5,000 in a porta potty when you could have had the best type of waste management system out there. Now, if you can't get this at a great price, you're like, yeah, I'm going to pay 5,000 for this porta potty. 
it's going to take me so damn long and there's going to be so little I have to worry about that it, you know, it just sounds like a great deal. So those are the things that you have to think about. And that's the the biggest factor that you, you know, you, you should uh, balance. Can you find this at a good price? If so, definitely go for it. If you can't find this at a good price, get yourself a composting toilet. Yeah. <laughs>